Registered Phenomena Code 979 Object Class Beta Red Hazard Types Grouped Organic Sentient Toxic Containment Protocols Currently, three RPC-979 instances are to be contained in a standard 6m x 6m x 6m anomalous fauna containment chamber at Site-279. Feeding sessions are to be completed at 12 p.m. each day, by dropping seven live mus musculus into the chamber through a sliding door located on the chamber ceiling. MST Tango-17 Peter Parkers, is tasked with the location and eradication of uncontained RPC-979 instances. Tango-17 is to locate RPC-979 nests and destroy them using flamethrowers. Civilians claiming to have seen RPC-979 are to be administered Class A amnestics. Authority Webcrawler 437452 is to detect posts on social media sites and search results suspected to be of a nature regarding RPC-979. Personnel are to manually delete confirmed RPC-979-related findings. Relatives or parents of expired RPC-979 victims are to be administered Class C amnestics to make them forget that the victims existed. All records of the victims are to be wiped. Surviving RPC-979 victims are to be administered Class A amnestics. In the event of a containment breach, ASF operatives are to coax RPC-979 instances back into their containment chamber by shepherding them with flames. Any operatives bitten by instances are to be taken to the on-site medical bay and treated. Any questions regarding RPC-979 are to be directed to Cody Palanez. Description: RPC-979 is a previously unidentified species of spider, genetically and physically similar to the Letrodectus geometricus. The average length of RPC-979 instances is 120 cm from mouth to anus, with the largest recorded adult instance being 150 cm and the smallest being 90 cm. RPC-979 instances exoskeletons are light brown in coloration, closely resembling the average skin tone of Caucasian humans. RPC-979 has six eyes, but rely on touch and vibration to see. RPC-979 are native to East Asia, and have been found in China, Japan, South Korea, and North Korea. The most noticeable feature of RPC-979 is that each instance has the face of a human child of unidentifiable sex located on its abdomen. This face is capable of movement and expression due to muscles in RPC-979's abdomen. Through unknown means, RPC-979 instances are able to speak and move the mouth on its abdomen's face while doing so. RPC-979 instances have what are similar in shape to human hands located on the end of their hind legs. RPC-979 are carnivorous, and mostly prey on human children, but will eat other animals such as squirrels and birds if desperate. RPC-979 instances use a unique method of hunting to capture human children, which involves the following. RPC-979 will stand on its front legs, so that their abdomen faces forward. They will use their hind legs as arms, using the hands located on their hind legs to grab and pick up objects. Instances will wear appropriately sized children's clothing gathered from previous victims to blend in more effectively. They will create makeshift hair out of other animals' fur, stuck together using their saliva. The hair will then be placed on the end of their abdomen. Their other appendages will be hidden under the aforementioned clothes. RPC-979 specimens will seek out small towns and cities, and make a nest in a secluded area. They will then alter themselves in the way mentioned above and head towards the nearest elementary school. They will stay around the outskirts of the school, but will also attempt to gain the trust of a student. RPC-979 instances appear to be telepathic, and use said ability to determine the interest of their victims. They will use this knowledge to manipulate their victims, and cultivate trust. After an RPC-979 instance has gained a child's complete trust, it will wait for on average three weeks. After this period of time, it will direct the child to follow them, and lead them to its nest. There, it will inject them with a powerful neurotoxin by biting them, paralyzing them in the process. They will then be wrapped in silk to prevent them from moving, 
and used as a food source until they have been completely consumed. Addendum 979.1 Request from Junior Researcher Dwight Newman RPC-979 Anesthetization Stop Request Requesting Personnel Junior Researcher Dwight Newman Residing Site Site 279 Site Director Dr. Joseph Orkins Data Request June 7, 2014 Required Funding Not Applicable Required Materials Not Applicable Overview This whole situation with RPC-979 is pretty unnerving. The whole spiders eating kids schism really gets under my skin. And not to mention the things trick the kids into trusting them, just to eat them alive while they can't move. But that's not what I'm talking about. What I wanted to talk about is the first two lines of paragraph 4 in the containment protocols. Look at this. Relatives or parents of expired RPC-979 victims are to be administered Class C amnestics, to make them forget that the victims had existed. All records of the victims having been real people are to be wiped. I have to say, this is going a bit too far. Not only are their kids' parents being made to totally forget that their kid ever existed, but then all traces of them are being scrubbed off like a speck of dirt. I don't care how, but this shit needs to stop. As well as this, there's the huge effort of wiping the earth clean of all proof of existence of a person. It's a huge waste of resources and takes an unnecessary amount of time. Even as a researcher working at the authority of all places, I find this completely unacceptable. Find an alternative as soon as possible. Dwight Newman Registered Phenomena Code 100 Object Class Beta Orange Hazard Types Organic Hazard Sapient Hazard Aggression Hazard Containment Protocols RPC-100 is to be contained in an artificial temperate rainforest habitat, with 60% of the habitat's surface submerged in water. Every three days, an adult pig is to be released in the RPC-100's containment chamber. Bi-weekly maintenance is to be held to ensure no holes or openings greater than 6 cm in diameter lead out of RPC-100's chamber. RPC-100 is a large organism resembling a cephalopod, more specifically an octopus. RPC-100's natural skin color is a dark brown, ideal for camouflaging in its natural muddy habitat. However, like most cephalopods, it can change its color at will. Unlike an octopus or any other cephalopod, RPC-100 possesses lungs rather than gills, allowing it to breathe on land. Also unlike other cephalopods, RPC-100 only possesses four arms. Each arm is approximately 15 meters in length, with an average of about 100 arm-like tendrils splitting from the base arm. Each of these tendrils can be individually controlled by RPC-100, as if they were a smaller arm. While RPC-100 does not require sustenance, if not given the opportunity to hunt, it will become highly irritable, tending to attack the walls of its containment chamber when in such a state. RPC-100 is capable of causing immense damage with its arms, far more than what should be possible given the arm's composition. These two factors make providing RPC-100 with something to hunt imperative to its continued containment. RPC-100 has shown considerable intelligence and problem-solving skills, even in comparison to other cephalopods and primates. It is capable of solving most puzzles given to it, and is able to escape any containment chamber with openings larger than its relatively small beak, which is 6 cm in width. It has shown in testing that it is capable of making this escape regardless of the number of traps or puzzles that are placed in its way, nor the complexity of said obstacles. This intelligence also gives it far greater control over its camouflage, allowing it to become practically invisible. RPC-100's intelligence is far higher than the lower-level versions of this article would indicate. RPC-100's actual intelligence far surpasses that of any humans. This was, however, not always the case. 
RPC-100 was first identified in 19. At the time of discovery, RPC-100 was a four-armed cephalopod that possessed lungs rather than gills. It demonstrated above-average intelligence, with problem-solving skills on par with a human toddler. Due to the light containment requirements, it was classified as Alpha and contained in a 100-liter aquarium in Site-027, where it remained for years. In 2000 and Authority personnel became suspicious of Site-027's low activity, besides weekly messages requesting more CSD personnel. Upon reaching Site, it was found the site had suffered heavy damage and had been largely reclaimed by nature. This, coupled with the fact the site was consistently sending out normal operational messages, caused theories of Site-027 being affected by an unclassified reality-altering phenomenon. However, exploration of the site revealed RPC-100 within the site's control room, broadcasting the all-clear messages. It was discovered far larger than its original size, with hundreds of smaller tendrils splitting from the main arms. RPC-100 was then heavily sedated and brought to its current containment location. RPC-100's anatomy shows how it managed to take control of Site-027. The tendrils along RPC-100's arms seems to contain heavily degenerated human organ systems. These tendrils do possess degenerated human brains, all of which are connected to RPC-100's main brain. However, these brains still seem to be partially independently controlled. However, this control is limited purely to instinct and emotion, and not control of any body parts or access to any sensory organs. Analysis of the brain waves emitted from these has shown they are in a considerable state of distress and fear. It is also considered likely that RPC-100 is able to control the senses of these brains, sending what could be likened to torture to prevent these lesser brains from assuming any kind of control. For these reasons, RPC-100's true classification is Gamma Red, and that threat level will be rising should containment ever be compromised. Its continued containment is imperative to the continued autonomy of the human race. However, its true nature is to be kept classified to prevent mass panic, either within the Authority or the general public. Addendum 100-A On 2000 A maintenance crew entered RPC-100's containment chamber to repair a 7cm hole. While the hole was repaired, the crew did not exit the containment chamber and no bodies were recovered. Due to this, any personnel entering RPC-100's containment chamber are to exercise extreme caution. Director's Notice I'd like to advise staff not to attempt communication with RPC-100. It may be intelligent, but it won't be intelligent enough to understand you. Due to the potential damage doing this may cause, attempting communications with RPC-100 is grounds for termination. Director. Registered Phenomena Code 031 Object Class Alpha Yellow Hazard Types Mechanical Hazard Auditory Hazard Containment Protocols RPC-031 is to be confined within a standard 6.1 by 2.6 meter intermodal storage container at the site. No personnel under Level 2 security clearance are to be allowed to observe or handle the subject. No electronic device capable of interacting with a standard ink printer is allowed within 30 meters of the contents held within as a safety precaution, as the range of its anomaly is not yet known. RPC-031 is by all appearances and evidence a seemingly normal office utility multifunction printer and copier. The materials and construction of the unit are not congruent with any particular brand or model of any known hardware, but does fall in line with the standard design of early 2000s office printers. The unit measures 1.39 meters tall by 1.23 meters wide and weighs approximately 77.1 kilograms. When RPC-031 is plugged into or placed within an unknown range of a computer unit capable of interacting with a printer, 
the software would make no effort to detect the device or install drivers on the host computers. Searching through connections will not reveal RPC-031. The connection is only revealed when attempting to print a document or image, where it will be displayed as an option, showing a mass of dead pixels regardless of the software used to reach the printing process. Other options and connected printers will no longer permit the option of printing through previously connected devices. Any attempt to continue with another piece of hardware will result in an error message stating Printing standard text documents from RPC-031 results in no unusual behavior. The unit does not appear capable of running out of printing ink, though it does require insertion of foreign paper. Due to the inability to connect properly with RPC-031, there is no way of displaying ink levels without a program capable of displaying them during the printing process. If this is achieved, the levels will vary heavily between repeated observations, sometimes even appearing as completely empty, yet giving no error when the printing process has started, and will complete as per usual with no ill effects. The anomalous properties of the object's surface when attempting to print images from the host computer. Images containing inanimate objects or fictional beings show no issue. However, if an image selected is a photograph that contains real living beings, animal or human, the printer will stall. This creates a loud noise described by Class E personnel as Recording of RPC-031 Heavily edited to remove neurological dangers Once the process is finished, the printer will exude a wet piece of paper thoroughly soaked in black ink. Most of the image will be recognizable, however, any area where a living being is present will be reduced to a deformed stain only vaguely resembling the subjects. Any output from the printer is labeled as RPC-031-1 from this point onwards. Any subject captured in the images used in RPC-031 that is processed through the hardware, whether through scanning or printing will, no matter where they are, so long as they are still alive at the time of action. It is not currently known what happens to victims of the procedure. Returning to the site where the original photograph was taken will result in the observation of entities known as RPC-031-2. The environment of the scene will not be affected, however, Matching their positions as designated within the printed image, formations of RPC-031-2 will hold their place. The appearance of these entities is described with conglomerations of wet printing paper and masses of black ink. These formations can be destroyed and moved, but will slowly return to their initial state through means of unknown propulsion. The composition of the scene will not be affected by constructs or beings that were not present in the original picture. RPC-031-2 will simply form in any empty space still present. Testing has shown that the constructs are capable of slowly moving loose objects preventing them from achieving their position. After approximately three to four hours, the entity's form will begin to create a noise identical to that created by RPC-031 during the printing, rising in volume over the period of twelve hours until it reaches upwards of 130 decibels upon which the constructs known as RPC-031-2 will dissipate in the mere puddles of ink and paper. Once this has occurred, the individual that initiated the print will now begin to display signs of serious paranoia and anxiety. 
Those questioned claim that they can see wet apparitions stalking them. Outside observation reveals nothing. However, descriptions match those of RPC-031-2 prior to their dissolution. It is unknown if these are the same entities that formed previously. Subjects targeted often attempt to flee their unseen pursuers. However, it is not known what their behavior patterns are due to the inability for bystanders to see the apparitions, or any anomalous behavior until the final result of RPC-031. After an indistinct period of time has passed, the victim will enter a violent seizure where their head and limbs shake dramatically until their body stills and they enter a short comatose period before their vitals fail. Autopsy reports reveal the subject's lungs to be filled to bursting with standard office paper and water glycol composition black printer ink. The cranium has been observed to be compacted with large quantities of exact replicas of RPC-031-1, resulting in severe brain trauma and cranial fractures. Despite the original document being intact, any former areas where living beings were present will now appear as nothing but blank white spots on the material used. Initial Discovery and Retrieval RPC-031 was recovered from an office of located within the city of in the Midwestern United States. The object was discovered after reports of an employee attempting to print a family photo with RPC-031. All casualties have been scrubbed as car accidents and high-grade amnesiacs have been given to all co-workers. Addendum. Previous owners, deceased, have described in authority-secured documents their attempts to dismantle RPC-031. After opening the case, they discovered nothing within that showed any unique properties, aside from a single metal plate located on the top side of the ink cartridge slots, showing as of now illegible scratches and symbols. Said cartridges themselves have never been found to contain any amount of printer ink. Any parts removed or damaged will eventually reappear within the chassis once leaving observation. Registered Phenomena Code 087 Object Class Gamma Red Hazard Types Currently Not Available Containment Protocols Primary Containment A Modified Unit with Advanced Life Support Capabilities ALS. Secondary Containment Negative Pressure Unit with EMF Generator and CBRN Capabilities Level 2 Medical Teams Consisting of Doctors, Anesthesiologists, Nurses, Cardiologists, Neurologists, Respiratory and Laboratory Specialists Level 3 Patient Procurement Specialist PPS. Level 0 Patient in an Induced Sleep State with ALS Attached RPC-087 OL Site-118 must be allowed to consume from Level 0 personnel while in containment at all times. On-site medical personnel is never allowed to enter the inner containment unit alone and without ASF personnel present. Level 4 MOP CBRN, must be worn by authority personnel at all times when inside inner containment unit. Should a MOP breach occur, authority decontamination protocol must be initiated. The medical team leader must inform containment specialist if Level 0 personnel is approaching death. The PPS must initiate procurement procedure immediately upon notification. Description: RPC-087 OL Site-118 is a shadow-like humanoid with no discernible features. Appearance resembles black vaporous gas. At this time, it is unknown if RPC-087 is sentient or organic, and its origin is unknown. Attempts to measure mass of RPC-087 at this time have met negative results. Its vertical height varies at all times. RPC-087 absorbs, consumes Alpha, Theta, and Delta brainwaves dreams, from sleeping and or unconscious victims. Ongoing research is in progress to understand mechanics of how RPC-087 absorbs, consumes gross brainwave activity. The current study indicates that brain mass is lost during these events. 
brain death is the result of sustained exposure to absorbed consume events. Temporary exposure to absorbed consume events results in CSDS to remain in either a vegetative or minimally conscious state. RPC-087 also exhibits physiological changes during absorbed consume events, and appears to become more solid and vaporous. When not in absorbed consume condition, RPC-087 can envelop victims and kill in approximately seconds. RPC-087 was first encountered on October 30, 1988, during the body retrieval of Mr. from Happy Home Hospice Care, located in the city of El Cajon, California. Local law enforcement was called to investigate the sudden death of was working for East County Mortuary, picking up the deceased Mr. Preliminary autopsy reports on the deceased ECPD and MST have produced inconclusive results. The bodies did not exhibit signs of trauma at the time of death. Authority personnel embedded in contacted containment units to incident site. Authority MST responded and assumed control of the incident. RPC-087 was found in a highly agitated state, killing a member of MST Alpha-5 before full containment was achieved. Addendum 087-1 Attachments Purge Police Report El Cajon Police Department 100 Civic Center Way El Cajon, California 92020 RA No. 88-452798 Beat No. 7119 On October 30, 1988, at approximately 1934 hours, I, A, Badge No. Police Officer 2 for El Cajon Police Department responded to Happy Home Hospice Care, located at 5610 Dehesa Road, El Cajon, California, 92019. Upon arrival to location, I observed two El Cajon PD units, No. 218 and No. 710, unoccupied with Code 3 lights activated. Unit No. 710 still has sirens activated. I then called out 1033 emergency traffic only radio code and requested for additional units to my location. I then observed a male subject in hospital scrubs, now known to be CDL No. A Address Vista, California 92081. I initiated felony pedestrian stop and at gunpoint commanded to stop and get down on his stomach. Complied with my verbal commands as I approached Officer Badge Number from La Mesa Police Department approached with weapon drawn and covered me while handcuffed Officer and I moved to a covered position behind my vehicle and conducted physical search of was hysterical and screaming, he's killing him, stop him please. Officer made several attempts to calm down to ascertain suspect information but was unsuccessful. Additional units began to arrive from multiple agencies and set up perimeter of location. Incident Commander Badge Number arrived on scene and activated the command center and initiated mutual aid. Officers Badge Number Badge Number and I made entry from southeast door located along Desha Road. Was immediately hit by suspect and dragged into room number, and we heard a struggle ensue. And I immediately approached the door with intent to engage suspect with deadly force. At this time, we observed officer on the floor, on his back and speaking incoherently. We called for extrication team and EMS to respond to southeast entrance. Officer and I swept the room and did not locate suspect. We both observed dark gaseous type vapor towards back of the room but did not make any further attempts to investigate. I radioed incident commander to report possible hazmat in area and that source of gas was possibly venting from cylinders present in room. Incident commander directed officers to stop forward progress and establish perimeters at current positions. At approximately 18-13 hours. Armed personnel identified as San Diego County Sheriff Department 
wearing hazmat suits made entry from southeast entrance. At 20.22 hours, suspect was reported in custody and Code 4 was announced. Local units were instructed to go 10-7, back in service, and 10-34, resume normal radio traffic was announced. San Diego County Sheriff's Department assumed perimeter security and initiated lockdown of Happy Home Hospice Care NFD. Officer A Badge number Signed Date October 31, 1988 Time 0030 hours MST Containment Report MST Containment Event Report RPC-087 OL Site-118 Date October 30, 1988 Time 1813 hours CC Units MST Alpha 5 Delta 3 MST OB Quetzal Target Location Happy Home Hospice Care 5610 Dehesa Road, El Cajon, California 92019 Country Code US RPC Number 087 Location Target Coordinate 11 SNS 15752861 TM Ref Series 1501 Joint Operations Graphic Radar JOG R Collection Date Time October 30, 1988, 1800 hours Type Geospatial Intel Satellite Overwatch ASAT 001D Quality Image Quality Good Angle 17.4 degrees Time over target 180 seconds Delivery System 10 two-man units, 1987 Crown Victoria, marked San Diego County Sheriff. Weapons 12 2 4 MP5 SD 9mm 2 Containment Weapon Aim Point Name Capture and Contain CC Narrative On October 30, 88, at 1813 hours, MST Alpha 5 A5 Delta 3 D3 responded to target location and initiated capture and contain mission. D3 and Level 4 MOP entered target building with A5 as fire support. RPC 087 was cornered in room number 66. D3 entered and immediately came under strong attack. A5 deployed containment weapon and was unsuccessful. D3 deployed containment weapon and made partial containment. A-5 pushed further in the target area and came under attack. Partial containment failed and A-5 sustained KIA. Containment weapon specialist was shrouded by RPC-087 for approximately 10 seconds and fell to the ground. D-3 was able to re-establish partial containment but suffered KIA. Specialist was fatally struck by friendly fire from A-5. A-5 Specialist Redeployed Containment Weapon Dropped by CWS D-3 Deployed EMF Containment Unit and full containment was achieved in approximately 20-22 hours. A-5 Continued Security Sweep and established full control of target location. D-3 Escorted RPC-087 to MST Aviation Support Base Pinal for extraction to Containment Site-118. KIA 2 El Cajon PD 2 MST Specialist Collateral Damage 4 Hospice Patients 3 Hospice Care Personnel Authentication Valid Registered Phenomena Code 035 Object Class Beta Orange Hazard Types Extreme Temperature Hazard Ideological Hazard Newtonian Hazard Mind Regression Hazard Sentient Hazard Containment Protocols RPC-035 is to be kept in a locked room at containment wing within Site-074. RPC-035's containment room can only be entered with direct supervision from at least one ASF unit and documented permission for personnel with no lower than a level 2 security clearance. Every three days, 
A participant should be sent into RPC-035's containment cell after drinking no less than 8 fluid ounces of the participant's choice of coffee. Additionally, at least one armed member of the Authority Security Force should accompany each participant at all times until their termination. The participant will be instructed to drink the liquid within RPC-035-1. Once the liquid inside of RPC-035-1 has been consumed, they should be escorted back to their cell before more RPC-035-1 can be consumed. The next participant in the set of five should be assigned to RPC-035 at the next scheduled time. When one of the participants has consumed 20 instances of RPC-035-1, they will be terminated. When all five participants are terminated, new ones should be assigned to RPC-035 immediately. RPC-035 is a normal-sized carmine-painted teapot, with six terracotta-colored spider-like appendages made of hardened clay that protrude from the base of RPC-035. These appendages seem to peak from the lower half of RPC-035. RPC-035 has a cap that cannot be removed, despite all attempts by the Authority. Additionally, samples of RPC-035's clay revealed no anomalous properties in the material. RPC-035 is variably hot to the touch and has a recorded lowest temperature of 71.1 degrees Celsius immediately after RPC-035-1 was consumed, and the highest recorded temperature of 829 degrees Celsius after 20 days of isolation. If conditions are met, RPC-035 will manifest an ornate glass teacup, filled with two ounces of a semi-translucent deep magenta-colored liquid which is similar both in smell and taste to hibiscus tea. This is to hereby be referred to as RPC-035-1. RPC-035-1 will always retain the temperature of 71.1 degrees Celsius, regardless of RPC-035 temperature. Symptoms involving the consumption of RPC-035-1 are currently incurable and include the following. Increased aggression towards all forms of life except microorganisms. Decreased brain functionality, starting with a 10% decrease in brain function after the first instance of RPC-035-1. The presence of a clear British accent, seemingly from a Southern Wales dialect. A heavy addiction to RPC-035-1. RPC-035 seems to have no melting point despite all testing by the Authority. Depending on the number of days it has gone without someone having consumed RPC-035-1, RPC-035 has a recorded lowest speed of 40 km per hour, and the highest recorded speed of 241 km per hour. The highest speed was recorded during a period of isolation, where no instances of RPC-035-1 were created or consumed. RPC-035 will roam around mindlessly when humans are not interacting with it and will only change its behavior when it comes within five feet of sapient life or senses through unknown means and obstacle in its path. If RPC-035 encounters an obstacle, it will attempt to go around said obstacle. RPC-035's behavior will change after five days if there has been no consumption of RPC-035-1, and RPC-035 will try to jump over all obstacles. Additionally, after 20 days without any consumption of RPC-035-1, RPC-035 will ignore any obstacles and will attempt to burn through them while walking repeatedly into them. When any human comes within 5 feet of RPC-035, RPC-035 will approach them. RPC-035 will proceed to manifest an instance of RPC-035-1. RPC-035 seems to be capable of doing this an infinite number of times through unknown means. If the human target refuses to consume RPC-035-1, RPC-035 will become incredibly violent towards the target and attempt to scald the human by pouring a tea-like substance onto them from its nozzle. This temperature has the same temperature as RPC-035 at the time of the outburst, and no anomalous effects have been recorded as a result of the liquid from RPC-035's nozzle. The violent outburst of RPC-035 usually ends in the termination of the target, due to severe burns to the cerebrum. Should the target consume RPC-035-1, they will immediately undergo RPC-035-1 symptoms. 
After RPC-035-1 had been consumed ten times, the person, hereafter referred to as RPC-035-2, will have been deteriorated into a mindless aggressive zombie-like humanoid. RPC-035-2 will carry and brandish RPC-035 and will attempt to terminate all life within its line of sight. While RPC-035-2 is active, RPC-035 will show no anomalous properties outside of indestructibility. This behavior remains constant until RPC-035-2 is terminated. When this occurs, RPC-035 will return to its normal state and continue to mindlessly wander, looking for humans to offer RPC-035-1 to. Recovery Log RPC-035 was found in on RPC-035 was found by MST Zulu-5 after a police call from reporting quote, a strange man committing a murder with a teapot, unquote, later identified as RPC-035. MST Zulu-5, codenamed Redcoats Falling, arrived at the sea of floor, splayed with blood and a tea-like substance, as well as five people staring down at three dead bodies, one identified as RPC-035-2 as well as RPC-035 wandering the room. Agent proceeds to take RPC-035 by its handle and swiftly take it to on-site containment before it can react to him. At the same time, Agent was ordered to bring in the person in charge of for an interview, while the rest of Redcoats Falling controlled the crowd and administered Class B amnestics to people currently in Interview 035-1 Interviewed Jackson Assistant Manager at Interviewer Agent Redcoats Falling Officer Forward Jackson was brought to a nearby alleyway to avoid any witnesses overhearing the interview. The interviewee was still slightly traumatized after the events of RPC-035's discovery. Begin Log Sir, I need you to try your best to stay calm and tell me what happened as best as you can remember. Alright, alright. <sighs> so this lad walks in, right? He seems to be a couple of sandwiches short of a picnic. His eyes snapped over to the person closest to him and he just started walking over to them. The only weird part of it was the teapot with legs in his hands. It's, it's probably some American thing, I thought. Then this bloody guy starts beating the poor lad to death with the teapot. They killed him before anyone knew what to do. Then another lad runs over and tackles him into a chokehold, and after a small struggle, the weird fella just slumps to the floor. The chuff bugger just stomped his head into a pulp in a rage. That, that bloody bloke probably cost us a bomb. Alright, that explains the first two bodies, but what about the third body? That's the weird part. I, I swear I must be dreaming or something. The teapot crawled up to the prideful bloke and just conjured a teacup with tea in it. The poor fucker says no, and the teapot just leaps onto his face and pours the tea into his eyes and face. The poor fucker's face melted off. I'm just thinking about it now makes me want to chunder. Seeing his face melt and... Oh god. Jackson proceeds to vomit on the floor, visibly disgusted. Thank you. Come with me and we'll take you back and it'll all be alright if you just listen to us. End log. Closing Statement Agent and the rest of MST Zulu-5 successfully administered everyone who saw the event with Class B amnestics and suppressive amnestics. Jackson was able to return to work, and the day continued as normal. The police report reads that a drunken man killed two men at and was then is killed by Jackson in an act of bravery. Addendum 1 it should be noted that the effects of RPC-035-1 are doubled when ingested by anyone with a mother or father of immediate British descent. The reason for this is currently unknown. Addendum 2 The effects of RPC-035-1 are halved when coffee is consumed within two hours of ingesting RPC-035-1, meaning that it would take 20 instances of RPC-035-1 for an instance of RPC-035-2 to be created as opposed to the standard 10 instances. Registered Phenomena Code 109 Object Class Beta Orange 
Hazard types Newtonian Hazard Sentient Hazard Animated Hazard Aggression Hazard Containment Protocols RPC-109's host is to be contained in a reinforced steel cylindrical building, with a radius and height of 2 meters. This building is located approximately meters from Krasnorarsky Cry, Russia, and is to be maintained by on-site staff. No human activity or motion should occur within 1 km of RPC-109's containment, excluding RPC-109's entrance. The entrance to RPC-109's containment is a small rectangular room that can be moved to RPC-109's containment chamber by remote control. This entrance will hereby be referred to as the Rat Trap. Lights within RPC-109's containment cell and the Rat Trap are to remain active at all times, and are to be linked to at least three backup generators in the event of a containment breach. RPC-109's host is to be strapped to a medical bed within their containment by their appendages at all times. RPC-109's host is to be kept awake for periods of at least one week. RPC-109's host should be allowed to sleep for only six hours in between weekly periods of unrest. RPC-109-1 nutrition is to be administered through IV, alongside stimulants and anti-hypnotic drugs. RPC-109-1 is to be monitored for any changes in life signs. Changes in RPC-109-1 life signs should be reported immediately to a member of on-site Level 3 Plus personnel. In the event of RPC-109-1's imminent expiration, a member of CSD personnel is to be sent into the rat trap alone. RPC-109-1 should promptly be terminated with the use of a remotely administered potassium chloride lethal injection. At this time, halothane vapor sleeping gas, should be released into the rat trap to render the member of CSD personnel unconscious. Medical personnel are to enter the rat trap with protective gear and prepare them to take the place of RPC-109-1. The CSD personnel in question will hereafter be referred to as RPC-109-1. RPC-109 is a shadow-like, parasitic, mind-altering anomaly, with the appearance of a distorted, smoke-like humanoid, with a stag skull and antlers. These features prolong and shorten, depending on the position of the moon in the sky. RPC-109 will seek out a human shadow to infect. RPC-109 infects shadows by making physical contact with them, causing him to absorb into the shadow instantaneously. Any human infected by RPC-109 is to be referred to as RPC-109-01. RPC-109's anomalous effects begin to manifest at any time from 5 minutes to 5 hours after infection. RPC-109-1 would then begin to experience cognitive effects that would persist for anywhere from 10 hours to 3 months. These cognitive effects will persist until RPC-109-1's termination. During this time, RPC-109-1's shadow will slowly begin to resemble RPC-109. Symptoms of RPC-109's infection typically begin as mild depression, and will progress into severe depression to the point where RPC-109-1 will frequently attempt conscious or unconscious suicide. Testing has revealed that RPC-109's effects act faster while RPC-109-1 is in an unconscious state. If RPC-109-1 is incapable of committing suicide, RPC-109 will begin altering RPC-109-1 subconsciously until all bodily functions cease. RPC-109 can only leave RPC-109-1 when RPC-109-1 expires. When RPC-109-1 expires, RPC-109 will attempt to infect the closest human shadow within 500 meter radius. If RPC-109-1 expires in an area 500 meters away from a source of light and a human shadow, RPC-109 will materialize. RPC-109 will proceed to hunt for a human shadow. If RPC-109 finds a life form without a shadow during this time, RPC-109 will proceed to violently rip flesh from their body at random, before consuming their cranium. It is noteworthy that RPC-109 will not rip flesh from the cranium during its rage. RPC-109 reported to be incredibly aggressive during this time, and has a strong physical form, 
cited to be able to bash through reinforced steel with ease. Supplemental Information Recovery Log RPC-109 was recovered in the isolated town of Krasnorarsky Krai, Russia. The town was monitored for three months prior to recovery, due to a suicide rate five times the Russian national average. Remote drones were used to visually confirm RPC-109's existence by observing the shadow of the local priest, later identified as an instance of RPC-109-1-1. MST Yankee 3 Game Hunters was dispatched to the town. Game Hunters apprehended RPC-109-1 and transported them to mobile site. Inside the mobile pre-containment analytical room, RPC-109-1-1 used a screwdriver on a nearby table and drove it into a larynx. RPC-109-1-1 expired minutes afterwards. Researcher was found to be infected by RPC-109 later that month. Researcher, hereafter referred to as RPC-109-1-2, was apprehended and contained within a mobile containment cell. RPC-109-1 was contained inside of the containment cell for a period of two months, during which they were kept for observation. This caused RPC-109 to become aggressive, infecting personnel inside a mobile site and causing them to commit suicide in a period of one day. RPC-109 was subsequently recontained and transported to a Level 4 testing containment cell at on-site containment, causing three containment breaches until the current containment protocols were applied. RPC-109's total personnel death toll is All experiments attempting to neutralize RPC-109 have resulted in failure and authorization for further experimentation is pending. Addendum A RPC-109's rate of RPC-109-1 neutralization seems to be growing exponentially. The longer instances of RPC-109-1 remain non-terminated, the faster and more effectively RPC-109 has been able to infect new instances of RPC-109-1. Currently, RPC-109-1 is capable of instantly infecting conscious brain functions upon infection of RPC-109-1. If the rate of RPC-109's growth continues, Procedure 109-A Kazan, may have to be enacted. Procedure 109-A will require two soon-to-expire members of CSD personnel. Further details of Procedure 109-A Kazan have been redacted for your security access level. Director of Site Register Phenomena Code 398 Object Class Gamma Black Hazard Types Animated Hazard Auditory Hazard Sentient Hazard Transmutation Hazard Containment Protocols Authority Emergency Suppressors are to be stationed in California, USA, with MST Alpha 07 compellers on standby to delay RPC 398 through thaumaturgic and religious means. If MST Bravo 39 Ballroom Blitz requires assistance or is otherwise incapacitated, all personnel assigned to RPC 398 are to have mandatory soundproof equipment attached to them at all times. CSD personnel who have undergone endurance training or have experience in synchronized dance are to be readily available upon manifestation of RPC 398. In case MST Bravo 39 fails to integrate themselves into RPC 398 and successfully dissipate the entity. Unless CSD personnel attempt to re establish containment of RPC 398, no personnel are to remove their soundproof equipment. A mass evacuation order is to be permitted by authority and government officials. Upon confirmation of RPC 398 manifesting, authority personnel are to silence media outlets shut down news broadcast, detain reporters, and ensure denial of civilian transportation in the areas affected by RPC-398, with a cover story provided falsifying reports of an experimental government device malfunctioning while transitioning through the area. 
RPC-398 manifests every midnight on June 3rd, and inconsistent dates in the month of October within a random graveyard, located in areas surrounding California and USA. The entity's appearance is that of a human skeleton, measuring 1.9 meters in height, with a dark pigmentation in the color of its bones, the letters AG protruding from its cranium, glowing in a fluorescent hue in addition to a white hue around its figure. RPC-398 is fully animate, and is capable of moving in motions not possible for most skeletal structures, bending, shrinking, extending, and modifying its physical form to seem fully elastic when a situation allows it to do so, causing it to be indestructible by current means. Albeit capable of being temporarily delayed in its progress through thaumaturgy and religious iconography, RPC-398's primary anomalous properties manifest when a living organism with a skeletal structure is within a range of which it is capable of perceiving audio caused by RPC-398. Its skeleton will be expelled via in the event that the organism refuses to dance or collapses due to exhaustion. This leaves affected individuals fully conscious, still capable of breathing through unknown means, but unable to move in any considerable amount due to the lack of a skeletal system until eventual expiration due to accelerated decomposition. Results with animals are inconsistent, as those that attempt to dance do so presumably as a survival instinct, while others immediately collapse or expulse their skeleton. The skeleton that has been expulsed have been classified as RPC-398-1 instances. The RPC-398-1 instance that has exited the subject will begin a synchronized dance, in which all RPC-398-1 instances will adopt the same physical properties of the primary RPC-398 anomaly, with a fluorescent glow to each RPC-398-1 instance perfectly synchronizing their movements until reaching the primary RPC-398 instance, where each instance of RPC-398-1 will begin the dance routine anew, while other RPC-398-1 instances attempt to pull other living creatures in the RPC-398 area of effect via forcefully dancing with the creatures until they enter RPC-398 area of effect, continuing the dance for 40 minutes thereafter, and then continuing to seek more living creatures. Field agents have reported RPC-398-1 instances of having incredible grip strength, and exert force above average for the creature the RPC-398-1 instance originates from. This has resulted in many field agents being lost to the anomaly. RPC-398's emitted audio is an acapella of Andrew Gold's spooky scary skeletons, with each instrument being played by multiple skeletons that have arranged other skeletons into instruments. Every skeleton added to RPC-398's entourage increases RPC-398's decibels by 0.1 with each human skeleton, and 0.001 decibel with each non-human skeleton. Given the amount of RPC-398-1 instances in RPC-398's entourage manifesting with RPC-398, its current decibels is hypothesized of being decibels with current RPC-398-1 instances including a variety of non-human RPC-398-1 instances. RPC-398 manifestation requires a grace period with exponential increase in decibels, increasing by one decibel every ten minutes, until it reaches its former decibel and entourage count prior to containment being re-established. RPC-398 entourage will appear from the ground below RPC-398 during the grace period joining it in its synchronized dance and continuing their attempts to bring more creatures on the RPC-398 area of effect. RPC-398 dissipates if its skull is removed during its dance by anything other than itself. The only possible way to remove RPC-398 skull is to implement CSD personnel with prior experience in synchronized dance and or personnel with exceptional endurance in the RPC-398 entourage. If they are able to reach RPC-398, they are able to remove its skull and cause RPC-398 to dissipate. This has proven ineffective with deaf personnel, as their incapability to hear RPC-398 audio results in RPC-398 completely ignoring their existence and unaffected by their physical interactions. Upon RPC-398 dissipating, all remaining creatures affected by RPC-398 will have their skeleton immediately returned to them with enhanced physical properties. 
Properties of enhancements are identical to RPC-398-1 instances, and all affected individuals are to be given RPC-398-1 classification and given Type II memory suppressants. Discovery Log On the night of October 31, 2011, local law enforcement received calls regarding noise complaints in the area. Local police officers discovered the remains of Green Ski and 27 other corpses of unidentified individuals around the manifested RPC-398, dancing with 29 instances of RPC-398, surrounded by candles and religious iconography. Authority agents implanted within the LAPD alerted the authority to RPC-398, and measures were immediately placed to counteract the anomaly after RPC-398-1 instances manifested and all affected personnel and civilians were assumed KIA. Addendum 398-01 A reminder to all personnel questioning why RPC-398 is Gamma Black. Imagine if the Authority had all efforts fail and we were unable to re-establish containment of RPC-398 before its grace period ends. Every living being would be assimilated into its twisted bone entourage of animals, humans, and everything in between. Now. Combine this with the sheer amount of creatures on our planet, and the number of decibels that it increases by with not only each human, but each individual creature, and the amount of damage that kind of noise can make would be irreversible to the Earth. It would increase exponentially until the very crust of the Earth is shattered, and RPC-398 would basically be drilling down until there was nothing but the magma-covered core of Earth remaining. That is why 398 is classified as Gamma Black. Dr. Cubes Registered Phenomena Code 124 Object Class Omega Purple Hazard Types Sapient, Regenerative, Incorporeal, Transmutation, Contact, Audiological, Containment Protocols RPC-124 is to be stored within a 5m by 2.5m BACU-A3A with an installed mechanism for converting the Faraday cage into an electromagnet. A version of the Biological Anomaly Containment Unit equipped with a Faraday cage, used for holding telepathic and metaphysical anomalies. Proximity alarms are to be installed along the interior walls of BACU-124. Alarms are to be programmed to trigger the electromagnetic current for the Faraday cage. Guards for RPC-124 must be on a neurotriptan. RPC-124-1 and RPC-124-2 are to be stored in separate ACU A3As, sized 8 m3 and 1 m3, respectively. Oniratriptan is to be employed for observation of RPC-124-1 and RPC-124-2. Testing with the RPC-124-3 instances contained within RPC-124-2 requires permission from human resources. Due to the ethical implications of RPC-124-3 experimentation, due to information obtained in Addendum 124-1, the Global Directorate has deemed that containment of RPC-124 would be a far greater threat to normalcy than RPC-124 itself. Therefore, RPC-124 is to remain uncontained indefinitely. RPC-124's location is to be monitored routinely for security. Should sightings of RPC-124 cease, or reports of ghost encounters increase in frequency, an available MST squad from Foxtrot 4, Hotel 1, and Sierra 8 are to head to RPC-124's last known location. Squads are to presume worst-case scenario and that RPC-124 must be found and rescued before a repeat of Incident-124-1 occurs. RPC-124 is a bipedal latentous entity 
bearing an appearance similar to that of a human skeleton, with the exception of the skull, which is identical to that of a Canis aureus. Entities that trigger anopticin neurotransmitters in the brain, effectively making them invisible. Jackal RPC-124 wears a ragged black hooded robe, and was discovered carrying a scythe and satchel, hereafter referred to as RPC-124-1 and RPC-124-2 respectively. RPC-124 is composed of an unidentifiable material, with properties similar to electromagnetic radiation. Researchers have hypothesized that this material is composed of non-baryonic matter, resulting in our instruments being unable to analyze it. Direct contact with RPC-124 causes living tissue to rapidly die and decay. This effect spreads through an organism at a varying rate depending on the level of consciousness, spreading through plants the fastest and humans the slowest. RPC-124 is capable of passing its body through solid matter, which it uses to reach into human subjects, an extract and amorphous mass, referred to hereon as RPC-124-3 from their bodies. RPC-124-1 is a site composed of the same unidentifiable substance as RPC-124. The blade of RPC-124-1 is intangible and is capable of extracting an RPC-124-3 instance from a person without leaving a trail of dead tissue. Extraction of RPC-124-3 invariably results in the death of the subject, regardless of method. RPC-124-2 is a satchel containing RPC-124-3 instances. RPC-124-2 appears to have an infinite storage capacity. RPC-124-3 instances are shapeless masses that are constantly in motion. They are also luminescent, and change color in response to different stimuli, implying a degree of sentience. It is hypothesized that RPC-124-3 instances contain a person's consciousness, which is why life signs cease upon removal of RPC-124-3. Addendum 124-1 Following containment, RPC-124 repeatedly requested to be released. While such requests are typically ignored, RPC-124's requests warn the consequences of apocalyptic proportions. An interview with RPC-124 was scheduled immediately to determine the legitimacy of its warning. Interview Log 124-1 Interviewed, RPC-124 Interviewer, Dr. Forward, Dr. Set up an interview desk in front of RPC-124's containment chamber. Begin log. Beginning Interview 124-1 Purpose of interview is to determine nature of forewarned threat. If you would like to state your name for the record, please do so now. You've given me so many names. I sometimes forget what my name is. Here, I believe you call me the Reaper? Not the most colorful of names, but it fits, I suppose. The Reaper? Are you referring to the personification of death? The Grim Reaper? That's the one. So, you're… death? Yes. I see. Sorry, I'm having a hard time believing that. Are you telling me that you're responsible for collecting the dead? Yes. Well, no, not entirely. It's a bit of a long story, one I don't have the time to explain. Listen, I need to get out of here. I'm already way behind schedule. 603 people are already on their deathbeds. Make that 604. I'm afraid we're going to require a bit more of an explanation than that, Mr. Reaper. What do you mean by, not entirely? <sighs> Where do I even begin? I suppose it all began a couple millennia or so ago. Back then, I was known as Janapa. I was born into a family of gods. Father led our followers to victory. 
Mother watched over the dead, yada yada yada. You know how it is. We were all led by Ra, the oldest and strongest of us. And we were regarded as gods by the people. Life was good. Then one day, he showed up, plaguing our people. We tried to stop him. It could hardly be called a battle. It was a massacre. I only survived because I begged for mercy. Traded my pride for humility. Royalty for servitude. He spared me, but ordered me to prove my submission to him. I... <coughs> I understand that you're upset, but I must ask you to continue. He made me kill my own followers. Do you have any idea what a follower means to a god? They are our lifeblood. They give us strength. And... And... It went against everything I had been taught. But you did it. Of course I did it. What choice did I have? Do you have any idea what it means to kill a god that's still being worshipped? Even another deity cannot do such a thing, and yet he did it like it was nothing. It would be folly to resist his authority. He is so powerful that even his pronouns are capitalized. Pronouns! I can't match that kind of power. Okay, this is quite the story, but what does any of this have to do with why we should let you go? Because he made me his harbinger of death. I am responsible for collecting the souls of the dead. If I don't do my job, people can't pass on to the afterlife. You'll have spirits floating everywhere, drifting about aimlessly. You know how many ghost stories have resulted from me failing to collect a soul quickly enough? Imagine that, but for everyone. I see. Thank you for your time, Mr. Reaper. I'll look into your claims and will respond accordingly. End log. Closing statement. Following interview, Dr. checked with the ACI for an increase in paranormal activity. Authority Central Intelligence They confirmed that reports of ghost encounters has increased drastically following the capture of RPC-124. A report was filed and submitted to the Board of Global Directors, who approved the release of RPC-124. Register Phenomena Code 994 Object Class Beta Purple Hazard Types Ecological Hazard Organic Hazard Regenerative Hazard Contact Hazard Biohazard Corrosive Hazard Explosive Hazard Toxic Hazard Containment Protocols RPC-994 is currently contained in a 7x5x8-meter room constructed of stainless steel, lead, and osmium. Every 10 hours, approximately 2 kilograms of meat should be placed in RPC-994's containment chamber. The walls must be at least 40 centimeters thick. Due to RPC-994's corrosive capabilities, containment chambers should be switched every two months. During the transport of RPC-994, a special 4x4x4-meter cage, made from osmium and lead, should be connected to the only door of the room that the anomaly currently resides in. ASF personnel are then tasked to lure RPC-994 into the cage. RPC-994 must be transferred into its new containment cell within 30 minutes. The transportation of RPC-994 should be supervised by at least six 24 armed security members. The ceiling of RPC-994's containment chamber should be fitted with an air cycler leading to a gas centrifuge system. This device is used to harness RPC-994-B from the toxic gas byproducts released once RPC-994 detonates the meat supplied to it. The centrifuge is to be depowered and cleaned twice a week. RPC-994 is a large and highly durable avian humanoid entity, measuring around 2.5 meters. 
RPC-994 is covered in a thick layer of black soot and red scraps of cloth believed to provide sufficient kinetic protection to withstand small and medium caliber ammunition. Endurance testing of RPC-994 versus various firearms continues. Due to the inherently hostile nature of RPC-994, it is impossible to remove any part of the layer for sampling or examination of RPC-994's body. RPC-994's face appears to be made of keratin, with a sharp beak and two hollow eye sockets. It emits a very strong smell of hydrogen sulfide, more commonly known as the rotten egg stench. RPC-994 does not appear to display any capacity for learning, reasoning, and communication. It seems to be driven purely by instinct to destroy everything around it. The reasoning behind its destructive nature remains a mystery. Whenever RPC-994 grasps a physical object with its elongated hands, regardless of size, the object will gradually acquire a thick layer of black soot, similar to the soot covering the anomaly. When the affected object is fully covered, an internal degradation progress will begin. During this process, dangerous gases such as hydrogen sulfide, bromine monochloride, and RPC-994-B are released. RPC-994 appears compelled to prioritize touching and seizing hold of organic matter above all else. RPC-994-B is an extremely flammable gas produced during the degradation progress of objects that RPC-994 touches. In large quantities, it is toxic to humans and plants. However, when a very small dose of this gas is inhaled into the lungs, a natural gas mask film is formed. It is consistent in the fact that RPC-994-B is not absorbed into the bloodstream and coats the inner membranes of the entirety of the lungs in a thin barrier. RPC-994-B absorbs gases heavier than elements commonly found in air and prevents them from entering the bloodstream, explaining the gas mask effect. This effect lasts approximately 40 minutes after gas is inhaled, after which ciliary motion clears the toxin-soaked film and is ejected as a phlegm. These effects are of protective usefulness during chemical attacks or leaks of toxic gases, but are only limited towards protecting the lungs so eye and skin protection may be nevertheless required. The capsules containing RPC-994-B are currently utilized by several mobile specialized teams, mainly for November 30, Forlorn Birds. RPC-994-B's gas mask effect doesn't appear to work on RPC-994-B itself. Provided that RPC-994 maintains physical contact with an object between 5 seconds to 5 minutes, depending on the weight of the object affected see table below, the object violently explodes, releasing huge amounts of toxic gases and residual amounts of RPC-994-B in the post-detonation zone. RPC-994 appears to sustain itself by absorbing some of the toxic gas emanations. With access to a large quantity of these toxins, RPC-994 demonstrates regenerative capability up to the restoration of 80% of lost body mass. RPC-994 isn't affected by the explosion at all, based on observations that not even the hanging red scraps from its body sway from the explosion. It is hypothesized that RPC-994 phases out during an explosion. Based on calculations derived from detonations observed in ballistics footage, it appears that RPC-994's grasp converts objects on a one-to-one -one ratio from normal mass to an equivalent mass of dynamite. Mass of touched object, amount of time needed to cover object, explosive power. 1 kg 5 seconds 1 kiloton 10 kg 10 seconds 10 kilotons 62 kg Average weight of an adult human approximately 17 seconds, 62 kilotons, 100 kilograms, 20 seconds, 100 kilotons, 1,000 kilograms, 200 seconds, 1,000 kilotons. Discovery RPC-994 was obtained on 19 after a successful raid on one of the research bases belonging to the hostile GOI Church of Malthus. During the raid, RPC-994 breached Malthus containment 
and affected approximately one to four people, most of which were unidentified test subjects used for Malthusian experimentation. It is theorized that the test subjects were used to produce gas capsules containing RPC-994B. It is unknown how many of the capsules weren't destroyed during the attack. Information obtained from Malthusian records indicates that RPC-994 was first sighted and shortly captured on August 2, 1908, in Taiga in the north of Lake Baikal in an uninhabited area. The Church of Malthus had conducted investigations to determine the source of a huge explosion known as the Tunguska event that occurred on June 30th of the same year. At the time, the Authority had failed to detect any anomalous entity and chose to enact a widespread cover-up, administering amnestics to all witnesses and leaving evidence that would suggest the impacting of a small meteor shower. Incident Log 994-1 Date September 10, 19 Location Site 015-07-2000 During routine transportation of RPC-994, damage had occurred to the cell transporting it allowing RPC-994 to reach out and seize hold of Agent for approximately seconds. This caused an explosion with a force of 249.6 minimum ignition energy, killing two personnel assisting in the transportation and injuring the rest. The eastern wing of Site-015 was temporarily closed and evacuated. A special unit was sent to capture RPC-994. After approximately 40 minutes, RPC-994 was successfully lured back to the cage and transported to the new containment chamber. Conclusion: Containment protocols have been updated to maintain a clearly marked minimum distance of 3 meters from RPC-994's cage at all times.